Does your podcast sound like it was recorded in a bathroom? If it does, then maybe you haven't found the right recording space in your home. Finding the right recording environment is going to be key for getting excellent sounding audio. And if you want your podcast to be able to compete in today's world, excellent audio quality is a must. What up, guys, and welcome to Clipped, a show designed to help you become a better, more efficient podcaster. My name is Eric. I'm your host and founder of the Podcast Haven. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about finding the best recording environment for your podcast. I realize not everybody has the funds to buy acoustic panels to fully acoustically treat their recording space. And so I'm going to be giving you some options on how to get the best recording in the situation that you're in. We're going to work with what you got, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to improve the sound of the room that you're in for really no money, or maybe if you have a budget, spending a little bit of money. But with no money or with a little bit of money, you'd be surprised at how much you can improve the sound of your recording. Okay, so here are some tips and options for recording in a non-ideal environment. First things first, you're obviously going to want to listen for like a gardener outside or your AC unit, or if it's a busy time of the day and cars are driving by, maybe your family is in the other room watching TV or on the phone or on a Zoom or the obvious stuff like that. You're going to want to check the box right away and try to record at a time of day where those distractions and that ambient noise isn't present. Getting that out of the way, let's talk right now about some things you can do to improve the sound of your recording that are easy and free. If you have a walk-in closet with clothes hanging up, go in there and try to record. Honestly, it sounds stupid, but a lot of people do record in their closet. The clothes hanging up are going to really absorb a lot of the sound and you're going to get a nice dead room to record in. Look, if it's not ideal, if it's not big enough or you don't have that, fine. But give it a go if you do and if you're on a budget You'd be surprised at how good your mic and your voice might sound in there. Next, you could try recording in your car. I know this depends on the weather and the time of day and where it's parked and also what kind of setup you have, but you'd be surprised at how quiet a car sounds. Also try recording early in the morning or at night, wherever you are. Early in the morning tends to be a little bit more quiet before people are on the go, going to work or the kids are going to school. Great time to record. Later at night, when everyone's settling in at home watching TV, If your room isn't picking up the TV or maybe once the wife or the kids or the girlfriend, boyfriend goes to sleep, that's a quieter time of the day. Next, do your best to record in a room with carpet. If you don't have carpet, buy a rug, buy a couch as well. Having those kind of soft items in your room will help absorb sound and you're going to get less slapback off the walls. Can't afford to buy a couch? Throw a blanket over your head. Put a blanket on your desk and maybe even hang blankets on the walls in front of you and on the walls to the sides of you. You'd be surprised like how much a quilt can help dampen the room and improve your recording. Another thing I've seen is people building pillow forts that you can go into. You could sit and bring your microphone and all those pillows around you are going to create like a vocal booth essentially. So you're going to have like this pseudo vocal booth where... Your sound is only traveling a foot or two or even less before it hits that pillow and gets absorbed. And it's probably not going to bounce really off the pillow. So you're going to get a nice dead sound. This is popular for people at hotels or people that like travel or on the go and they record a lot. Don't sleep on the pillow fart, guys. You're also going to want to have proper microphone technique. Me recording this right now, I'm literally on the microphone. My mouth is almost touching the mic capsule, the windscreen. Learn about your mic, whatever kind of mic you have. More than likely, you're going to want to get really close to it. And on another note, you're going to want to use a dynamic cardioid microphone. I talked about this in the last episode, but these are the ideal mics for podcasting. They do a great job at only picking up your mouth, your voice right in front of them and rejecting a lot of ambient room tone and slap back. You're just going to get that nice close up sound. So those are all the free tips. But another one is kind of the most logical one, if you can afford it, is to buy acoustic panels or some foam to hang on the wall. Uh, I love a company called Gik Acoustics, G-I-K Acoustics. They're out of Georgia. They've got some great stuff. It's reasonably priced. 
start with like two or three panels. If you have a little bit more money or as time goes on, as your podcast grows and as you grow, buy a few more, place them on the wall. That's really going to do a great job of absorbing the sound of your voice. Foam is another option. Foam's a little bit cheaper. You can go online to Guitar Center and type in like foam acoustic paneling. There's a ton of options there. If you do go the foam route, I don't recommend just gluing the foam panels right on the wall. Here's a pro tip. You go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or your local arts and crafts store, buy some poster board and then glue the foam panels to the poster board. And then you can just tack the poster board onto your wall. The foam's going to be super light. So a tack will hold it up. I've made this mistake. I've glued them to the wall. It's hard to rip them off and it leaves like a residue on the wall. And then you have to clean that. Whereas if you use a poster board or like a really thin plywood and hang that up on the wall, you can move it around. You can find like where it sounds best, where the reflections in your room are coming from. Gluing them on the wall ruins the foam. So if you move or you want to change the location, it's a pain in the ass and you're going to have to buy new foam. When you rip it, it's going to come apart. So don't do that. Hope some of that info is helpful. I know some of it kind of sounds funny, but honestly, really anything you can do to deaden the sound of the room you're in is going to help improve your recording. Getting a clean recording going in is going to make your editing and mixing much easier. There's a phrase that people use in audio, shit in, shit out. Basically, like if it sounds like shit on the way in, it's going to sound like shit even when it's edited, even when it's mixed. You want a clean sound going in. It's going to make your job easier. And then your final product's just going to be clean and it's going to be kind of effortless. That's it for me today, guys. If you want to learn more, go ahead, check out the website, thepodcasthaven.com. We're over there producing shows for brands, businesses, influencers. If you need help with your podcast, shoot us an email at thepodcasthaven at gmail.com. We've also got the ebook on Amazon. It's called The Four Pillars of Podcasting. It's going to help you take your show from idea and concept through launch and even marketing. So recommend that you guys check that out. Also follow us on social at the podcast Haven on all our channels. Take a few minutes out of your day. Give us a rating. Give us a review. Tell us how we can improve. Tell us what you like. Just jump in to say hi. Let us know what's going on. We love connecting with like-minded people. And we're here to help you along your podcasting journey. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.